In this WrestleTalk news, WWE stars are upset with WWE, Vince McMahon spotted backstage at Raw, and Luke's review of last night's Raw. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support WrestleTalk! On last night's Raw, after it had previously been noted by reputable outlets, WWE officially announced King and Queen of the Ring that will take place at the end of May in Saudi Arabia. Note that it's called King and Queen of the Ring this time, and not King of the Ring and Queen's Crown Tournament. They're doing it right this time. The announcement on Raw was complete with a video package hyping the event, but there were a couple of people who weren't too pleased with the promotion of the show, that being the current reigning, I guess you can call them, King and Queen of the Ring themselves, Xavier Woods and Zelina Vega. Both taking to Twitter to voice their frustration, the pair was notably absent from the video package, which is certainly a choice when they won it the most recently, and in Vega's case is the only Queen of the Ring to exist so far. She said as much with her tweet responding to WWE, saying, love that the last and first Queen of the Ring wasn't shown in that clip, but okay. Meanwhile, Woods went a step further and simply posted a new version of the video package but edited to include him and Vega instead of the other wrestlers WWE chose to highlight, with the caption, I fixed it. While hopefully these tournaments can be done correctly this time, instead of the women's matches only being given a fraction of the time of the men's ones, and the winners of the tournaments being treated correctly and maybe getting a title shot instead of Woods technically beating Reigns, but it being ruled a no contest, and then Reigns stomping on his crown and bending it like it's made of plastic, undermining the whole thing. Fingers crossed. But who knows, as we've got Vince McMahon backstage at Raw again. Wah hey. Several outlets, including Brian Alvarez, Dave Meltzer, Sean Rossap, and Worked Wrestling, all reported that Vince was backstage at last night's show. So was this time for his continued push to take over creative once again? No, not really. But there is some breaking news though. Vince McMahon, no. No, that can't be right, really? Vince McMahon has grown a moustache. Everyone drop whatever you're holding, get to some shelter as soon as you can because Vince has clearly lost it. I'm mostly joking, obviously, but it has been known for several years that Vince hates the idea of beards and moustaches, maintaining his clean shaven look because he can't let the beard win. So what's caused him to change his mind now? Is he losing his mind when not in control of creative? Well, according to PW Insider and Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful, Vince was primarily at Raw to visit John Cena, not to do anything else for the company or run the show. However, there's always the ever-present looming threat of Vince, as Worked Wrestling, while confirming Vince was at the show, also mentioned that he has had a hand in more creative than people realize. Always reassuring. Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio also had some thoughts on Vince at Raw, and he doesn't think it's as innocent as visiting a friend. He wasn't barking orders at people or anything like that, but he was in Gorilla all night, and I was told they tell you he's only there to visit John Cena. That's the story, but there's more to it than that. It's not like he was there in charge and doing stuff, but it's not like he was just visiting John Cena and saying hi to a few people and then left. That didn't happen either. The truth is a little bit in the middle. Whilst Vince has made his return to WWE, WWE now, how about the team that he quite infamously wasn't too keyed on, that being FTR. The duo made their return at AEW Revolution following heavy speculation and teases from the team that they may be on their way out of the company and potentially heading back to WWE. So naturally the next question was whether Dax and Cash were set to commit their futures to AEW past April or would their return be short-lived? Well according to Fightful the WWE speculation can now be put to rest as Dax and Cash have both committed their long-term future features to the company. The return of FTR at Revolution was reportedly kept a secret backstage, with many not aware of it happening. Not only that, but Fightful are also saying that all of the suggestions they would be leaving the company were in fact all part of a storyline. Now, over to Luke for Raw. Thank you for your support on Patreon, Double L, Liam Leonard, and Mad Mac the Meat Father. Get your name read out on the WrestleTalk news by heading on over to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk. And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, aka the first Monday Night Raw that actually feels like the Road to WrestleMania edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. The show kicked off hot with Kevin Owens and Solo Sokoa who went after each other with a lot of fire. Unfortunately, and this would be a recurring theme for the rest of the night, this was not about the 
actual in-ring action. These two could have a killer match, but that's not what this was here for. It was all about the post-match angle. Jimmy Uso jumped in and caused a DQ. Vince, is that you? And Sami Zayn ran down to make the save. Zayn again extended the olive branch to Kevin Owens, who again rejected it. I don't think Sami Zayn realizes just how much he broke Kevin Owens' heart when he sided with the bloodline. He knows he did wrong for sure, that's why he's trying to make things up to him, but I don't think he truly understands how hurt Owens is. We saw a backstage segment where Zayn was again asking for them to be on the same page. We don't need to be friends, we just need to work together in order to take down the bloodline. But Owens told him that maybe Zayn should just go back to Roman Reigns and stroke his ego. Just leave me alone. This is all awesome and powerful stuff, and it only got better when we got to the main events. Bobby Lashley cut a pretty lousy promo on Bray Wyatt, but it's a promo of quality befitting the few. Carmella asked Chelsea Green to be in her corner for her match with Bianca Belair, but it didn't really help her as Belair dispatched of her quite quickly. There was still a little bit of that Carmella in complete control when we came back from the ad break, but it felt more like bad commentary this week rather than actual fact like it was last week in the Asuka match. Mel got a couple of near falls off of green distractions, but Belair never actually felt in danger and won with the KOD. The heels beat her down and Asuka made the save. I smell a tag team match in a few weeks time, player. How will they coexist, etc. While all of this is broadly fine, I could really do with this Asuka and Belair feud actually getting started. The Miz was in the ring to act as a moderator for the face-to-face -face between Seth Rollins and Logan Paul, which was a pretty good segment. If you enjoy three people acting like enormous douchebags but getting amazing crowd reactions for their efforts. Logan Paul got great heel heat and Rollins felt like the biggest and most over babyface on the show not named Sami Zayn. They finally set up a match for Mania and Logan Paul stood Logan tall when he hit Rollins with the one lucky punch. I still think Miz is going to help Paul win at Mania and that will spin off into a Rollins vs Miz feud for the next few months or so until the rematch at King and Queen of the Ring in Saudi Arabia. Turns out last week's announcement of Brock Lesnar vs Omos, sorry, Omos, was not a fever dream, and the big lad beat Dolph Ziggler in a short and incredibly heatless match. This did have a fun setup though, as Mustafa Ali, Dolph Ziggler's number one fan, got the match made and was in the crowd to sarcastically cheer him on. It's actually pretty funny. You've also got to respect Brock Lesnar, man. He looked at a spooky match with Bray Wyatt and decided he'd rather not. He looked at taking an absolute beating from Gunther and decided he'd rather not. So instead, pitched a match where he has to do such little work and take such few bumps for as much money in the shortest amount of time possible. It's quite an admirable start to take. Finn Balor had Johnny Gargano beat until Edge made his third return in as many months and helped Johnny Wrestling pick up the win. It was a match that had a lot of potential on paper, but again wasn't there to be about the in-ring action and was just there to facilitate the Edge return. Edge returning and attacking a member of Judgment Day? Haven't seen that one before, he said sarcastically. Piper Niven beat Nikki Cross in a very quick and heatless match, and we got some comedy backstage where Rick Boogs accidentally got Elias a match with Bronson Reed for next week. Cannot wait to hear that lack of crowd reaction. But speaking of crowd reactions, John Cena returns to Monday Night Raw. John Cena came out to a massive reaction and felt like a bona fide megastar of epic proportions. He also looked genuinely choked up by the reaction he got, which was quickly interrupted by Austin Theory, who challenged Big Match John to a big match at Wrestle Johnnya. And Cena said no. Well, that's that I guess then. But Theory wouldn't accept that. He called John bald and wondered why Cena, the man who was all about respect and not giving up, is showing him no respect and giving up on a match. Cena then cut a vicious promo on Austin Theory, explaining that he wanted to pass on the match for Theory's own good, because if Theory loses, he'll lose everything. But if he wins, he'll have to deal with the Raw After Mania crowd and won't have Cena there to get reactions for him. Because in the most damning part of this promo, Cena told Theory that he'd rather go bald than have WWE pipe in fake crowd noise to make it sound like people care about him. 
Ouch. Cena eventually accepted the match and said that it was the biggest mistake Austin Theory will ever make. It was a killer promo and an excellent performance by Cena. Theory was no slouch here either and really played up that he did not expect this side of Cena to be here tonight. It was simple but very effective build for a match that Cena surely is destined to lose and put over the younger guy just like The Rock did for him all those years ago. Cena also did a passing of the torch moment with Cody Rhodes which was quite nice. Baron Corbin wanted to join Maximum Male Models and Maxine said she'd consider it if he beat Chad Gable. He could not and WWE did not have the theory courtesy to pipe in fake crowd noise to make it sound like people cared about this. Team Beckstream celebrated their title win with Trish Stratus and the trio challenged damage control to a trios match at WrestleMania. Bailey accepted which was not well received by Dakota and Io and the baby faces stood tall. There are apparently some twists and turns coming in this story and I personally can see Trish Stratus turning on her team at WrestleMania. And the main event saw Sami Zayn take on Jimmy Uso in a match that was, you guessed it, not about the in-ring action, but actually about the post-match. Jay Uso appeared in the crowd and was there to see his brother lose to Sami Zayn. He got in the ring and seemingly made his choice. Torn up, he left the ring and hugged Sami Zayn. The crowd exploded into Usi and Holy Shirt chants. What does this mean for Mania? What does this mean for the bloodline? What does this mean for Jimmy and Roman Reigns on SmackDown? But just as those questions rattle through our minds, Jay Uso super kicked Sami Zayn and beat him down with his brothers. It was an awesome moment and a wonderful wrinkle to this story. There's a really good argument that Jay did not do this for Roman and he didn't do it because he hates Sami. He did this to save Jimmy. If he didn't return to the bloodline, Reigns was going to blame and punish Jimmy for everything. So Jay made his choice. He chose to save his brother. It's the same reason he acknowledged Roman in the first place. That's why he looked like he was so torn when he was in the ring with Jimmy. It's why he hugged Sammy. It wasn't a swerve for the sake of a swerve. It was a conscious choice. He did what he had to do for his family. It was an incredible ending to the first Raw since maybe even before Elimination Chamber that has actually felt like worth tuning in for. The in-ring work was lacking and it sure felt every minute of its three hour runtime, but it had some really great angles and some really good build for WrestleMania. This week's Raw is back to four out of five. Hey, you there. Can I let you in on a little secret? We're working on a new limited series of video essays about video game movies based on a book I wrote a few years ago. This has been a project we've been wanting to do for the last few years and we've been working hard on it behind the scenes for the last few months. The channel is called Cutscene and we need your help. We're looking for image gatherers who can work to a brief who have a good knowledge of video game movies like Street Fighter and Super Mario Brothers, as well as the world of video games like Sonic the Hedgehog and Metroid. If this is you, if you're watching this now and that sounds like you, we want to work with you. This will be a paid role and will last around one to two weeks, but if it works out, we could bring you in for other WrestleTalk projects. Please email support at WrestleTalk.com with your application. I'll be doing a special Q&A live stream tomorrow afternoon on the new channel to talk about the project, and we'd love it if you could join us and help us reach a thousand subs. There's a link in the video description down below. But until then, here's Ollie Davis reviewing AEW Revolution 2023 which he rather enjoyed. FTR return, John Moxley debuts his new favorite weapon, a frickin' brick, and all competing members of strong submission style specialists, the Backpool Combat Club, tap out. William Regal leaves you all alone for three months and now this? I'm Ollie Davis, and this is my review of AEW Revolution 2023. In about 10 minutes.